have here, we have the uh, tandem chiller. It's three, three modules, two scroll compressors, each module. Um, we have the module interface here, controlled by the remote master. All three modules are controlled from here. Programming logic is accessible through there. Um, as far as set points and all that, you can view in there, view alarms, um, stuff like that. The standard chiller operation, you gotta have water flow on the chilled water and the condenser side. Um, let's see what else. A uh, couple of the checks you're gonna do, there's uh, maintenance checks in the manual, the oil sight glass for each compressor are accessible here. I can show you where they are on each compressor. There's two refrigerant sight glasses, for one for each circuit on the back side, which is open back there. Um, so you want to check that. Uh, you're gonna, uh, part of the like, monthly maintenance will be checking the unit for short cycling compressor. You know, standard stuff that the mechanics know. Um, Vibrations, abnormal noises from the compressor and piping. Uh, you want to check the water leaks. Um, you, uh, the, uh, let's see. Um, breakers are here in this panel for each chiller. Main one, two, and three. The remote master control breakers here for that. Um, let's see what else? You can get in here. The programming, you can uh, see all the stuff, you can check, view what it's doing. Factory setup, input output setup, tool setup, sub menu below that. It's all explained in the uh, manual. Number two manufacturers here. Programmers are uh, readily available for any questions. Uh, on off switch for each unit, on off switch for the remote master, line voltage isolation in there. Um, um, standard bubbles in the sight glass. After running for 10 minutes, you want to check the sight glasses, there are bubbles in it. Um, you want to call for service, um, and the sight glass is yellow. That's going to call for service. Um, go. Shut down the unit. You can disable it here. Disable it here. Program escape. You disable each one. Turn this switch to all. Um, there we go there. Uh, enter. Compressor status here. I don't know if you guys just noticed the X's in there. That means uh, the, they call this empty. Tandem calls this empty, and these both compressors are um, ready to receive their start enable signal from here. Allowed to run. If it has X's in it, there's a problem, alarm of some sort. It'll scroll. This light will be on. It'll have an alarm here. No flow. Uh, high, high entering water pressure. I mean, uh, water temperature. Uh, freeze. Um, all that kind of stuff. There is something to be aware of. There is a high entering water alarm on this. If the if the entering evaporator water is above 80 degrees, it holds the operation of this out. All right, that's all adjustable. Um, and it's, so, but you know, we don't. The manufacturer doesn't recommend adjusting it. If you have that high entering water alarm, what you do is. Um, you know, you'll correct the reason why, and then they call the factory, and disable it for the time being, stuff like that. That water temperature gets below. It really shouldn't be a problem, and I'll explain to you why. There's automatic system change over the campus chilled water loop on this thing. So if this goes into alarm, some other requirements will be met that um, the auto automated uh, the automated system guy will explain on Wednesday. The uh, change over to campus chilled water. 
the data center is pulled from that until these issues can be corrected, reset, and, brought, and this chiller can be brought back online. Um, let's see. Um, you know, again, the basic maintenance, checking pumps for leaks, uh, checking all the water connections for leaks on both the condenser and the chilled water side. Uh, you want to uh, isolate power, check all the electrical connections. Okay, um, can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, you have. Does this thing can I finish and then, and then you definitely can Let me yeah. just go through right. what they want me to say. Mm -hmm. sure. go there. All right, um, pumps and strainers. You have suction strainers on the front of the pumps. All the pumps have them clean now. You got strainers here. Pull and clean them as needed, you know. Um, and the compressor should check for abnormal noise and oil leaks. It's a scroll compressor, you know. So, uh, cycle is oil leaks. You want to check all the refrigerant cycle, I mean, all the refrigerant line for oil leaks under them and all that. Um, and water, you know, you want to maintain clean water. Uh, make sure that the water in here is clean um, and up to what it needs to be. Go ahead. On the uh, in the event these things are shut down by the uh, high evaporator in that temperature, you said it switches over to campus to a water system. Well, it should. It should. That should happen before this thing right. even approaches that. That's actually uh, what'll happen is it's a training on Wednesday. But the logic it, it uses is if there's alarms here and that evaporator temp gets to 53 degrees it all, and there's differential pressure on the campus chilled water loop, it will automatically switch over uh, okay. through the um, IDC system we have, you know, we have installed. So that's how, so it should never be an issue. Um, so the campus, the, the campus chilled water loop will, will maintain the temperature where it needs to be maintained? Oh yeah, yeah, yep, definitely. Campus chilled water, you know, everything's you know, they they low. Some, did they add, didn't they add some capability up here? Capability as far as cooling capability? Oh, no. Um, well, computing, yeah, yeah, they, they added the weather. Weather. Yeah, that's all. Okay. That's the whole thing. They, they bring right, the so what, what I'm saying is this is made to pick up all that load, but the, the chilled water supply coming in, is it... Yes, it's all, it's all, it's all, all load, yes. load. it's all design built with everything, you know, they knew exactly what they were doing as far as the data center load being sized for the chilled water system, yeah. Um, anything else? I don't know. Site glasses, are they color coded on, on site glasses? I mean, standard, they, you know, there's a, we can show you, well, if you have a flashlight in the back, the site glass, yeah. Indicates moisture, stuff like that. So it looks right good. in the middle. 